Hello, this is a lecture on section 10.5, which is equations of lines. Um, so far we've learned about slope intercept form, which is y equals mx plus b. But there's two other forms that I want to talk about here that are new that we haven't talked about. Uh, so point slope form, this is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. This is actually the equation of a line with slope m passing through a point x1 comma y1. This is the one that we're going to use if they give us a slope and a point um, and we need to write down the equation of a line. So it's actually very helpful. That's a new one there. And then the last form is standard form. Now standard form is in the form ax plus by equals c. Capital A, B, and C are all going to be numbers. And uh, the idea is to have them not be fractions. So you're going to have to multiply everything through by the LCD so that there's no fractions left over. Standard form is mostly useful because it's a form that doesn't have fractions. Um, whereas slope-intercept form, y equals mx plus b, m can often be a fraction there. And in point-slope form, also, m can be a fraction. So we're going to be working with point-slope form to write down the equation of a line with slope m passing through a point. And then we're going to be uh, writing our answer in ax plus by equals c. So we're going to write answer in standard form. And I think some other books might also call it general form, but I believe ours calls it standard form. Okay, so let's see an example of using the, these two new equations for lines. Okay, so example. Find an equation of the line with the given slope that passes through the given point. Okay, so find an equation of the line with the given slope with the given slope that passes through the given point. Okay, and then they want us to uh, write our answer in standard form. Okay, so write the equation in the form ax plus by equals c. So that's standard form, or sometimes called general form by other books. Okay, so that's a lot of instructions. And we're going to just do a couple of these. Um, so for number one, we're going to have m is our slope, and that equals negative 8. And uh, the point is going to be a negative 3 comma negative 6. So slope m equals negative 8 and it passes through the point negative 3 comma negative 6. So the idea here is we're going to actually want to be wanting to use point slope form first because they gave us a point and a slope so we use point slope form. Okay, so point slope form, I'll just write PS form for point slope form. Well, we know that that is, oops, wrong button. We know that point slope form is y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. That's what I had written above, way up here. 
That's our point slope form. And we're using that because we have a point and a slope. So here m is negative 8. And then our, we need to label our point as x1, y1. Okay. So here x1 is negative 3 and y1 is negative 6. And then we plug everything into point slope form. So we're going to have y minus y1. So that's going to be y minus negative 6 equals m, which is negative 8, times the quantity x minus x1. So that's going to be x minus negative 3. So y minus negative 6 equals negative 8 times the quantity x minus negative 3. And we're subtracting, okay? But there's two minuses here and also two minuses over here. So um, those minuses are going to cancel out. So we're actually going to have y plus 6 equals negative 8 times the quantity x plus 3. And on the right side, we're going to go ahead and distribute the negative 8. Okay, so we get y plus 6 equals negative 8x minus 8 times 3 is 24. So we have negative 8x minus 24. Okay, and then from here, um, we want to write our answer in standard form. So we want to write it in the form ax plus by equals c. So to get it in that form, you basically move all the terms involving variables to the left side, and you move all the terms involving just constants to the right side. Okay? So for standard form, to get it in standard form, The basic idea is move all variables to the left side and move all constants to the right side. Remember constants are just numbers so they're not going to have a variable to the right side. Okay, so like here, we want to move the negative 8x to the left side, and we want to move the positive 6 to the right side. So let me write that in. So we're going to actually add 8x to both sides to get rid of the negative 8x on the right side. And then to get rid of the positive 6 on the left side, we're going to subtract 6 from both sides. And after we do all that, we want it to be in the form ax plus by equals c. So we're going to have 8x on the left side. So we have 8x plus by, well that's just going to be plus y, equals, on the right side we have negative 24 minus 6, which is negative 30. So we have 8x plus y equals negative 30. All right, and that's in the form ax plus by equals c. So now I'm going to go ahead and box that. That's how you want to write your answer. Okay? So that's a relatively easy one. Um, I'm not saying it's easy, easy, but it's, it's hopefully pretty straightforward. Um, now I wanted to do another one that's a bit harder because it has a fraction. So fractions can make the problems a little bit more challenging. Um, depending on what numbers you have. All right, so let's see an example. Uh, this is going to be example number two. It has the same instructions. So for number two, the slope m equals a fraction, so it equals 11 over 5. And uh, the point that they give us is 8, comma, negative 2. So what makes this more challenging is that we have a fraction here for the slope, 11 over 5. But we still want to label our point 
as x1, y1. And then we're going to use point slope form. Since we have a, a slope and a point, we use point slope form. So that's y minus y1 equals m times the quantity x minus x1. And then plugging in, uh, y1 we know is negative 2. So we actually have y minus negative 2 equals 11 over 5 times the quantity x minus 8. So y minus negative 2 equals 11 over 5 times the quantity x minus 8. Now this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You might not be sure what to do here because of the fraction. There are different ways of doing this, but probably the easiest way to do it would be to first of all cancel out these minuses. So if we cancel out these minuses here, we get y plus 2. Um, so we have y plus 2 equals 11 over 5 times the quantity x minus 8. So what you want to do is, because you want your answer to be in the form uh, ax plus by equals c, they mean you're not supposed to have any fractions left over. So for standard form, you need to get rid of any fractions. So how do you get rid of this fraction? Well, you multiply both sides by 5. Okay, so that's called clearing the fraction. I'm going to go ahead and multiply both sides by 5. And that's going to get rid of the fraction on the right side. I know it's a little bit strange. And also notice that on the left side, because there's two terms, I actually put parentheses around the y plus 2. So the reason I'm multiplying both sides by 5 is so the 5's cancel on the right side. And that's going to get rid of that fraction. And then on the left side, we can distribute the 5. And on the right side, we can distribute the 11. So we're actually going to be distributing the 11 on the right side because we already got rid of that 5 there. Okay? So after we do the distributing, on the left side we get 5y plus 10. And then on the right side, distributing the 11, we get 11x minus 11 times 8 is 88. So 5y plus 10 equals 11x minus 88. And then remember, we want to get all the variables on the left side, and then we want to get the constants on the right side. So I want to move this 11x to the left side, and I want to move the 10 to the right side. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to subtract 10 from both sides to move the 10 to the right side. And then I'm going to subtract 11x from both sides to move the, the variable to the left side. So on the left side, now what we're going to have is negative 11x plus 5y. And then on the right side, we're going to have negative 88 minus 10, which is actually negative 98. So you should have negative 11x plus 5y equals negative 98. Okay? And then um, they want you to actually have a be positive. That's something that I forgot to mention. So the reason we had to multiply both sides by 5 was to get rid of the fraction. Um, but it's in the form ax plus by plus equals c now, but a needs to be positive. So that's something that I almost forgot to tell you. So a must be positive. Okay, for standard form. And remember, standard form is what we're going for here, writing in the form ax plus by equals c. So to make a positive, how are we going to do that? 
Well, to get rid of this minus in front of x, we're going to have to multiply both sides by negative 1. I know it's a lot of extra work, but that's what they want you to do. So we're going to multiply both sides by negative 1. Okay? Um, and that's going to switch all the signs. So on the left side, we're going to have positive 11x and uh, negative 5y. And then on the right side, the minuses are going to cancel and we're going to get positive 98. So what we're going to get here is positive 11x minus 5y equals positive 98. And that's how you would write your final answer. A lot of extra work, I know, but that's just how these are. Okay, cool. Thanks for watching.